All right, welcome to a new one on this channel, and this occasion is the Crush module from Shaperbox. Everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like this guide, please like and subscribe, and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Everything is at the description. Right, so while the drive shaper, which is going to be the red one, uh, is a more analog type of distortion, uh, the crush is a digital distortion module. And we get it by uh, reducing the bit depth and the uh, and downsampling. So first I'm going to start with this section, the one that says bits. I have a drum loop right here. Now the magic of this, uh, you know, this module is not just, you know, go uh, down in bits or, you know, go down and resample. It's all the different options that you have right here and the possibilities with the, uh, you know, the uh, multi, multi-band and the mix. All right, so this is my loop and it's pretty simple. So we can, you know, really see what's going on right here. We have some kicks, some uh, hats right in between and then the snare and the kick and so on and so on. Okay, so if I go down in bits, we are going to be crushing it. And that's how it works. You go down, as you go down on the white axis, you're going to be crushing it. That's it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to be playing it, and I'm going to go down on the bits. So if I go down, this is what happens on the shape. So all the transients that we have right here are just, you know, they're getting crushed, of course, but, you know, they are passing through. We are not killing them. Now, the hats that are right here in this section, right in between, they start to disappear. And at some point, if I keep crushing, we just get the louder transients, just the peaks. And if I do more, oh, made a mistake right there. If I keep going, at some point, we just get... The you know, mostly kick and snare, and it's just the transients of the kick and snare. Everything else is just, you know, gone. And this is, you know, again, just normal. You're crashing it. The push is going to help us to even everything a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down and play it again. I'm gonna go down, and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna crush it until we are just, you know, getting the peaks. So when I go and up on the push, what is it? The ones that we have right here are going to start to appear. And not only that, we can hear them. Right? So now we get them. So we go down. Very choppy. But now we just get them back. So the push, what it does, uh, is going to DC offset before crushing. So this means that it's going to push everything that it's down, it's going to push it up, so we can, you know, bit crush a little bit more evenly. Again, if I play it, whatever is down, like the decay of the kick and the snares and the hats, now are up, so we can hear them. If I go all the way down to the push, we just get the transients of the different sounds, you know, the different parts. So again, you use the push just to even, even uh, everything a little bit more. Right. Of course, it, it has its own sound, it's just pretty bright. Alright, so the push, super helpful, right? So then you have the ditter. Now, the ditter is super helpful uh, depending on what you're doing or what you're using as a source. And what it does is it's going to try to preserve the original uh, sound, try at least, when you go down on this control. So it does it with noise, and you know, I'm gonna be playing it and give you an example. I'm gonna start crushing. Alright, so we crush super hard. I'm gonna enable ditter, and now we get a very noisy sound. So this is it. It's using noise just to try try to preserve the noise, the, 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 the sound. Now the thing is that again, it's just maybe not super useful. So this is why we get some of the other controls or the other sections on on this uh, you know on this module. We have the multiband, so maybe I can go to the higher frequencies and bit crush the higher frequencies. If I remove the ditter, it's just darker. We can you know not hear anything. If I ditter, we we just get it. Now even uh, I can even bring the push and get something back. Now also, what we could do, we could go down in the mix and have a blend between the processed and the not processed signal, the dry and the wet. If I turn it off, super clean, a bit more crunch. So 
Again, all the uh, tools that you have right here are really useful to you, are really useful tools that you can use when you uh, bit crush, right? So push all the way down and again disable this. So maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, that when you go to bits and you do something on the LFO, it doesn't matter what of the bits, you're gonna be doing the bit crush. But if you go to resample, you have a completely different LFO. So you might run, might be running something for the uh, for the bits and something else for the resample. You have two LFOs. Fine, and that's again super cool. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way up in the mix and just gonna move on to the next module, which is gonna be the resample. Okay, so the resample is going to go down on the sample rate, and by default, it's going to be 44.1. And uh, if you go all the way down, you can go all the way down to 8.8. .8. Now, if you're using higher resolution when the control is all the way up, uh, this section, it's pretty much disabled. So whatever you're using, it's just gonna pass through. All right, so on this one, we're gonna be downsampling and uh, all of this is just completely up to you. Um, if I, when I use a, a downsampler, when I downsample or reduce the sample rate uh, with a bit crusher or a downsampler in this case, my way of using it is just, just a tiny bit, right? Very subtle. If you go really aggressively, it doesn't sound that good. So. Just going down a little bit, but is it super bright? Just a tiny little bit. It is a bit, you know, less harsh, a bit more smoother. All right? Listen to the hi hats. All right. So my way of using this is just a tiny little bit. And again, all of this is just completely up to you. Maybe you want to use the multiband and just focus the downsampling on the higher frequencies. Right? And leave this part untouched so you get a, you know, a more focused uh, kick and bass, uh, kick and, and snare, and just, you know, focus on the higher frequencies. Again. All of this is just completely up to you. This is your way of using this. Now we need to discuss the other parts, the, the, the jitter and the pre-filter and the treble. Uh, okay, so jitter. Uh, this one, what it does, and it's not just here, it's just uh, common knowledge. What it does uh, is going to modulate the sample rate. It's usually with, uh, made with noise. I'm not really sure how it's being done right here. Uh, it doesn't say in the manual, so I guess it's going to be noise. So why noise? Well, because noise is an unpredictable source. And this is what it does. Again, the jitter is going to modulate the down, the, the down sample, the, the resample, just like this. You know, it's a, in, in a more subtle way. I'm just trying to show you. So as you go up, it's going to modulate it. And this is how different it sounds. So since it's going really, you know, fast up and down, you get a much crunchy type of sound. Even if you do a tiny little bit, but it's super crunchy. Now I'm gonna keep going down. Maybe gonna stand uh, maybe around here. I want you to hear, especially the kick and the snare. What is that we are getting a tone, right? And this is fine. This is why, you know, because we are downsampling, we start getting that noise, that tone. Now the jitter will use a little bit, will help a little bit to smooth all that. Because again, it's just modulating the rate. So this sound is a you know a lot more useful for me than this. But again, it's just completely up to you. It's just taste. Alright. And this is why we get, you know, the push, the ditter, the jitter. It's because just maybe doing resample is just not, you know, not doing it. So we use this extra options just to fine-tune the sound and just get something a little bit better. And maybe if I go to bits. Uh, to, to this one and just you know bring it down i'm gonna need to push to get something a little bit you know more useful and just blend it all right 
again, all of this is just completely up to you. Uh, I'm going to go back on this and go back to the resample. Now, uh, the next options are going to be the pre-filter and then the travel. All right, so the pre-filter is going to be a filter, is a low-pass filter. So if I play it and I enable this, I'm going to go down. Notice that we still get the tone, but now it's completely different. Notice that the kick and, the, you know, pretty much the kick. It's a lot cleaner. So again, it's just a low pass filter prior to downsampling. All right. So the other one is going to be the travel. Maybe I'm going to bring back the, the jitter. Now, if I go all the way up on the travel, it means that we are not doing anything. If I move this down, notice what happens. We get a darker sound. So this one is super obvious. It's a cut on the higher frequencies. All right. All right. So now we know how all what all the controls uh, will do. So uh, then you have, of course, the LFO section, right? And right here, again, it's just uh, completely up to you. It depends on what you want to do. And uh, let me give you just a couple of examples. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the higher frequencies, which in this case, it's going to be mostly the hi-hats and a little bit of the snare and the kick right there. So maybe I'm going to be using resample and I'm just going to be maybe going right here, go right here. And I'm just going to be maybe there. So, all right. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create a rhythm pattern, something that it's pretty, you know, pretty noticeable, but not super noticeable, all right? So that is just a little bit too much. So if I go up, we do just a tiny little bit. And if I remove it, right? So this, again, adds a little bit of movement. If I go more obvious, and a little bit of jitter, just to get a more noisy sound. And we can go down and mix. This is just adding a little bit more. If I disable, it's pretty clean. All right. Super cool. Now, what if I go maybe go to the low section and maybe go to the bits section and I just, you know, try to do something just similar, but I'm going to be doing it to the kick and the snare. So maybe I want to do something right here. I'm going to be maybe focusing on this, on this area. Let me do it. Just do it first. You get the idea of what I'm doing. All right. Something like that. Why not? If I go all the way up, nothing happens. I'm going to do just a tiny little bit. And at the same time, I'm going to be doing push and enable the ditter. All right. Now, remember, all this is maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to be bringing down the mix. If I turn it off. Super different, right? Okay, if it's too aggressive, maybe a little bit more. It's just going to do the trick. Just... So the way I use this, what, what the way I like to use the crush shaper in this case, is just to do, uh, just to do a tiny little bit, just to bring a little bit of lo-fi and a little bit of, you know, life, let's say. Now, uh, again, my way of using the Crush Shaper is just a tiny little bit to grab something that is super clean. And this the loop that you're uh, hearing is a loop I made myself, which is clean samples, right? Sounds super clean, but this just just a lot more colorful and alive. And we are doing a tiny little bit. This is my way of using this. Now, of course, the other way of using this module is by, you know, changing the sound completely. All right, so I have a bass right here, and let me just play it. It's a pretty aggressive bass, and it sounds cool, but I just maybe want to try some, some, you know, some odd things. So I'm gonna go to bits right now, and you do have, you know, the templates right here that you can uh, use. In this case, I'm gonna go manually, why not? So I'm gonna stand right there, and I'm gonna be creating a breakpoint right here. I'm gonna snap to grid, and I want to create a, 
a more a more rhythmical variation. That kind of sounds cool. I'm gonna do something there so we get something more aggressive. And again, I'm just you know improvising. I'm just playing around right here, which is what you should do. And again, just by doing this, we change the sound completely, right? And this is going to it's going to show up in the mix, right? Like in effects. If it's too aggressive, again, go down in the mix. And we can maybe go to resample and again, do whatever the F we want. You're just, you know, fooling around. Just gonna do something more rhythmical right here. Something like that. There you go. And again, it's just a completely different bass. So without simple bass, just, you know, a different bass. You're just changing it. Alright, so this is the other way of using the Crush Shaper. Just using the bits and the resample just to get a little bit of movement and, you know, a different vibe. Not just, you know, flavoring the sound by going down in bits by hole and the resample by hole. Just create movement and, you know, get different sounds from something that was pretty, you know, pretty boring, like this. Now, of course, all of this depends on, on your production. Maybe this on your track is just not gonna work. Alright, maybe this, something a little bit simpler, is gonna, you know, it's gonna work. But if you want a little bit of movement, something that maybe that it's missing, this one is just gonna definitely, you know, help. Alright. Alright, so that's it. So hopefully you find out all of this just useful and uh, remember to like and subscribe if you liked it. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can. You have the QRs on the screen or you can go to the links at the description. You have links for PayPal, you have Patreon and you have YouTube. Thanks. Alright, so see you on the next one.